Hi, this is Gershon Wolf, and welcome to Modern Music Composition. <laughs> um, we're going to continue our discussion on the major diatonic scale, but I'm also going to introduce to you a new scale, and that's the minor scale. And in this discussion, we're actually going to be using the relative minor to the major scale. And in this example, I've got C major, so how do I calculate C's relative minor uh, scale, which happens to be A minor. Well, it's easy. You take the circle of fifths, which I've got written down here, and for any major scale, you can easily calculate what its relative minor is by looking at the minor circle of fifths, and that's written on the inside in lowercase. So, for example, with respect to C major, A minor is its relative. With respect to G major, E minor is its relative. Well, you could probably see a little trend here, and that trend is, is that every single relative minor is three semitones stepped down from its major. So what do I mean by that? If I'm, with, if I'm at C major, I just step down three semitones and I get to A. So to explain that a little bit in a little bit more detail, I've taken a subset of the chromatic scale here. And I'm, here I am at C, and to get down to A, it's going to take me three semitones. I got to go to B, I got to get to A sharp, and then I got to get to A. So that's one, two, three semitones. And likewise, to get from any minor to its relative major scale, you just go up three semitones. Okay, well, for a little bit more review, too, I want to show you that the interval structure uh, that we learned in the previous video with respect to a major scale, uh, two is, it would be two semitones, so that's, that's a whole tone. Um, it goes whole, whole, semi, whole, 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 semi. For the minor, all we've done is switched and shuffled around in an orderly fashion, actually, um, the interval structure. It goes two, so it was whole, semi, whole, whole, semi, whole, whole. Well, I'm just going to show you in a little bit more detail how you actually get to that point. You can actually derive the minor um, scale from the major scale by just doing a series of inversions on the major scale. And in fact, that's what defines the modes of the diatonic scale. There are seven modes associated with the diatonic scale. We're not going to get into too much of the nomenclature here. I just want to explain to you how you get from major to minor. So if we have, this is actually an eye exam. <laughs> um, if, if we start with C major and we call that the Ionian mode. If we want to get to the next mode, which happens to be called the Dorian mode, um, we just do a first inversion. We take that C and we pop it over to the other side there, and lo and behold, we've got the Dorian mode, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If we want to get to the next mode, which is the Phrygian mode, we do a inversion on the Dorian mode, and then so on and so forth until we get down to the sixth mode, which is called Aeolian. That happens to be the minor diatonic scale. So there are some pretty cool properties associated with this. Actually, each one of these modes has associated with it a little bit different behavior with respect to how it sounds. But there are two things that stay constant. One, the number of pitches stays the same, and two, the interval content stays the same. It's preserved. And when you preserve the interval content between two scale systems, or even between two chords, you can think of this as a long chord, <laughs> um, when you've done that, um, they become interrelated to one another, and in, and in an abstract way, they become what's called, they, they become part of the same set class. So I remember how I mentioned I was going to talk a little bit about set theory. Well, we're going to go through a proof today, and I'm going to prove to you, using set theory, that the major diatonic scale and the minor diatonic scale are part of the same set class. And that means that they have the same number of pitches, and the intervals have been preserved, even though they've been shuffled around. So that like I mentioned in the first video, there's 208 different set classes. The diatonic scale happens to be one of them. But 
it's very interesting the fact that each one of these modes has a slightly different behavior with, re with respect to how it sounds, but they're all part of the same set class. So let's go ahead and, and do that proof. Um, let me just erase the board here. And as we do the proof, I'm going to bring in some new nomenclature that's used in set theory and a little bit different way of looking at the chromatic scale because we all know that the diatonic scale now is a subset of the chromatic scale. So let me draw another clock diagram. Quarter it off here. So rather than write out the circle of fifths, we're just going to write out the chromatic scale in circular form. We'll start with C at the top. This is actually a really cool way to, um, to find relative uh, tritones um, pairs. So remember how we were talking about B and F? Well, they're just straight across from one another. C and F sharp, C sharp and G. So those are all tritones. Um, just a little divergence there. Anyways, let's get back to our uh, problem here. Write out the C major scale. C, D, E, F. G, A, B, and then our A minor, um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This is major. This is minor. Okay. I'm also going to do something a little bit different here in terms of now I'm going to associate each one of these notes with a number. So we're going to just start with zero, one, just like a regular clock. Okay. So from here, let's pull out the major diatonic scale. And I'm going to just label that with a red dot because we're going to be doing a couple different scales here. So we got C. D, E, F, G, A, and B. Well, it turns out that the next thing you want to do is you want to put in number form, sort of renaming the major diatonic scale in number form. So. I see here, I, uh, let's start with C. We've got a 0, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, and 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now we've kind of converted these um, letters into numbers. It's just easier to do these calculations when you do that. Um, turns out, uh, to be to, to the definition of a set class is a series of tones put into an abstract form called a prime set. So now I'm introducing the word prime, and that is uh, an abstract set of numbers in which many different scales or chords or series of notes are associated with. So. How do we calculate the prime form? Okay. Well, the first thing we do is we have to calculate what's called the normal form. Another word, the normal form. Well, what is the normal form? I've written out here from C all the way to B in number format. Turns out the normal form is taking this circle, this clock diagram, and traversing it in a manner in which is takes me the least amount 
of space to do and is in its most compact form. What do I mean by that? If I were to traverse it like I did with C all the way to B, I get something that looks like this. Here I am going, I, and I, by the way, I have to go in clockwise manner. I went 11 ticks. Okay, I could do that. But there's a more efficient way to do it. Because of the way that these are distributed um, around this circle, um, what if I took and started from B? Because I know if I start from B and I go all the way around to A, that's 10 clicks. Let's take a look and, and see um, what that looks like. Oops, let me do it in a different color. Okay, I've done it in 10 clicks. Now, I could have chosen actually to do it from E and gone 10 clicks to D. Well, there's a reason why I didn't choose that. And here's the reason. If I were to do that, let's use another color. And we go around to D. Sure enough, I've gone 10 clicks with the red as I did with the blue, but let's look a little bit more closely at the, uh, uh, at, the, at the blue diagram. And that is that if I start here with B and go to C, another two clicks, another four clicks, gets me to another density, a, a, a semitone difference between these two notes. So just between, now I'm going to draw it on the inside because I'm running out of room. Just between here and here, I've covered one, two, three, four, five notes. If I started with E and went around, oops, if I started with E and went around, by the way, I have to stay clockwise, I would have covered one, two, three, four, five, When I do it this way, I got one, two, three, four, five notes I've covered here. Here I've covered one, two, three, four, five notes. However, it took me a longer path to do it starting from E because I have a whole tone, a whole tone, and a whole tone. So the most compact form to the left, going clockwise, is to start with B and traverse back to A. So, Let's write out that. That starts with 11. Then we got a, a 0, we got a 2, 4, 5, 7, and 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Actually, you'll, you'll see 11 written with an E, and you'll see 10 written with a T, just so that um, you don't get it confused with two ones. We'll draw that a little bit closer. So that gets us into what's called the normal form. Now we want to put it into prime form. The only thing we really need to do at this point is now um, make sure that we start with a zero. That means that we need to now just transpose, in this case, up one semitone so that 11 becomes a zero. So then let's just do that. 11, we got a 0, we got a 1, 3, 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, 7 plus 1 is 8, 9 plus 1 is a 10. This is in prime form. And it's the most fundamental form of the diatonic scale. It turns out in in terms of set classes, this is named 735. 7 because it has 7 semitones and 35 because it just happens to be the 35th 
um, structure in the series of seven semitone set classes. Now this is just a very brief introduction to set theory. We're going to go into much, much greater detail. But what I wanted to show you now is that, okay, we've now calculated what the most fundamental form is for C. Well, we've also used the same number of notes in, that you would use in A minor or any of the other modes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So it's the number of pitches and it's the preserving of the intervals that gets you to know that if you're dealing with different, you know, just a priori looking at these two sets, you might think they're different. They're actually incredibly similar. Okay. And set theory is used quite a bit in actually both tonal music and atonal, but in particular atonal music to you start with or you, here's one strategy, you can start with a set class, derive many different scales or chords from that set class, and interrelate those in your piece of music. And that's a, a very standard way of composing atonal music. Now there are, very, there are obviously a lot of ways of doing it. That, that's one way, and we'll, I'll be giving some examples of that. But lo and behold, there you have it. And like I said, it's for the, this, this is, is, is 735 is the set class for the diatonic scale. So that means all those modes that I showed you before fall into this same set class. Even though each one of those modes sounds slightly different from the other mode, they're very similar to one another. And that's a really important concept to understand in set theory. Okay, that's it for now, and we'll see you later.